All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is start putting my paint everywhere where I want black to be and try and chase the borders of the entire design. So you can start with those big brushes, but if you're wanting to be super careful, it's really important that you take the time to follow your contours as you paint. Now if your leather is dry, it's going to be very thirsty and your paint's going to dry fairly quickly. So you won't have to rush through the whole thing. Um, some people will dilute the paint so it's wetter and that will allow you more working time. However, that's also going to take, it long, take a lot longer to dry and so you don't want to have to um, wait the extra time if you know exactly what you want to paint and when. Okay, the only concern you're going to have is if you lay it on too thick, you'll get streaking. So you want to work at a reasonable pace, just slowly chasing those lines inward so you get the details that you want. So I found as I work from side to side, what works best is just taking the time to use my borders that I've carved or that I've embossed to really guide my brush where I'm, where I'm trying to paint. So what I'll do is I'll walk into that little edge and then feel it, and it'll have a little bit of pushback on the bristles. And that's what's going to give you really clean lines. So when you do your emboss step, or when you do your carving step, it's important to give yourself nice, clean borders. So when you go to do the painting step, it's a lot easier. You can just feel it out and let the bristles find the edge of your perimeter and smooth it out. So you'll notice that as I paint, I'm taking the time to find those borders and just let the edge of the brush wick into those borders for the detail. And if you see little spots that are taking longer to dry, usually that means the paint is thicker and it's okay to come back and touch those spots up. So like right here and right along there. And you'll notice as I do my painting, I'm rotating my object. I'm not trying to move around it. You just sit in the same spot so that it's most comfortable for you to do your painting operation and really chase those lines in nice and slow so that you're getting exactly what you're looking for. And this will be good because it's going to allow your lines to pop so much more when you come back with that highlight color. So usually you pick a low light and a highlight and they're different values. So one is like a, a lighter color and one is a darker value, you know, so gray and white or yellow and blue, but something with a fair amount of contrast to really make it pop. If you go too subtle, like silver and gray, no one's going to notice. Um, if you have a light brown and a dark brown, that works pretty well. But um, you want to make sure either your values change, so like red and orange, or um, the darkness, the shade is going to change. So like a light gray and a dark gray. But what you don't want to have is colors with similar values and or similar hues. It's just really subtle. Oftentimes with earth tones, it gets you in trouble because the dark greens and the dark browns look so similar by the time you're standing 20 feet away. You'll be like, oh, those look very similar. I should have less brown in my green or, you know, more yellow in my green. You know, something to make those values slightly more distinct. But if you want it to fade into the background, you can get away with using very similar values. And it's much harder to tell if your paintwork didn't work out the way you intended. So there's that, that lucky advantage there. So you can see the paint's drying very quickly, which is nice. But that means that as you're going around your perimeter, you want to catch those little details that you may have missed before you get too far in. So you'll see as we're working closer to the edge, 
this little area by the border could use a little more touch up. So I'm going to have to come back and try and get that tiny edge filled in without laying too much paint down in the process. So then I'll spread out the paint that I have in a wide area. And now that my brush is dry, I can pull some of this excess out and spread it out more evenly so there's not a thick glob that takes forever to dry. So as you start to get your border refined, this is a good starting point for figuring out how you're going to do your detail work what exactly you want to do once you get into these finer regions and how you're going to hold all of that together. Okay. So we make sure that all those thick spots get spread out and that our borders are refined. And the interesting part is this is all very smooth so all I have is this thin carved edge acting as my guide but once we get into the rocky road of the carving intricacies in the crane, you're gonna find I'm gonna to switch to a finer brush and really start taking my time. So what's likely is we'll have a quick demo of what I'm doing and then a time lapse. So you don't have to spend hours watching the process, but just a couple of minutes to see that it just takes a lot of very neurotic focusing. So you just want to get the last of your border done. And don't worry if you paint over a section you didn't want to. You're going to be able to come back and paint with your other paint directly on top. You just want to get it as close as possible. Think of this as a really good practice run for when you're doing the highlight color, where everything's going to matter. You're going to have to get all those lines chased nice and tight. So you just want to make sure that you took the time to lay down the groundwork for success as you start with your next color. Make sure I get this last little border, like so. There it is. All right, so there we go. We've done our perimeter. This is the easy step. I think we're gonna cut the video and then um, I'll come in and do the detail work of the cranes.